All right, good family, good family. We are live and direct, live and direct. If you're coming online, uh, uh, give me some hearts or I don't know if <laughs> Facebook Live does hearts, but give me, let me know you're coming on. Let me know you're coming on and we'll begin in just a couple of minutes. Again, if you're coming on, give me a check or a thumbs up or, or just say hi. Let me know where you're coming on from. Let me know who's coming on and we will begin in just a few minutes, in just a few minutes. Again, okay, there we go. Okay, my wife is watching. That's always a good sign. That's always, <laughs> that's always a good sign. Glad she's watching. Uh, uh, anybody else, come on. Come on in the house. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Oh, come. Uh, old time saying, okay, Russell. Russell is watching, okay. Okay, okay. Sounds of blackness in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on in the room. Huh? Huh? As you're coming in again, again, as you're coming in, just give me a heart or something so I know that you're watching. We're going to get going in just a few seconds. Again, if you're coming in, give me a heart to check. Uh, let me know so that we can, as we get going, we can, we can be, we can be in company. Okay, I see Carissa's in the house. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good to see you. Good to see you. I pray each of you are doing well uh, in your quarantine states <laughs> as you are trying to figure out uh, this side of life. I so believe that God is up to something um, major. Chris is watching. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Carissa. Hey, hey, hey. I so believe that God is up to something major, that we are living uh, into a new dispensation, new reality of God. Laverne is in the house. Good to see you. Good to see your sister Laverne. Laverne in the house. And so we are excited about what God is doing, what God is doing. Okay, okay. The end in the house. The end in the house. Hey, hey, how, how is your quarantine going? How's it going? Being in the house and trying to figure out uh, life on this end, y'all, y'all surviving, y'all still loving on each other. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's safe. It's good to be here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These are exciting times. I was telling a, a group of pastors last night. I cannot wait to see what church looks like on the other side of this. Like I can't wait to see. You know, I, 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 I was saying if we. If we go through eight or nine weeks of this and then go back to traditional church as we have known it, uh, I feel like we'd be taking a step back. I can't wait to see how we begin to do new church and how we begin to new, do new engagement and how we begin to do new connecting as a community, right? Like what new things is God giving us exposure to in this season? And then how do we begin to retool and utilize those things as we go forward into the next level of where God has taken us. You know, so I'm excited to see what God is going to do with each of us in this season. The other piece is that as I think about this season, I think about um, what it means. And, 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 and you've heard many times uh, the Second Chronicles 7, 14, about if my people who are called by my name, all that kind of stuff, humbled and pray and repent. But one of the things that we often do not acknowledge or talk about uh, is this idea of around, around repentance, right? What kind of praying are we doing to God? What does it mean to call out to God, right? And so what a great opportunity to spend this time uh, in your quarantine thinking about what are the things that we need to repent to God for? What are the things that we need to lay before the throne? And when we think about that word repentance, this has nothing to do with the Bible study. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. But when we think about that word repentance and we think about uh, what am I repenting for? What does that look like? The real question of what you're asking is, what am I doing that um, is dishonoring to God? What am I doing that is dishonoring to the presence of God, right? And so what are the things that I'm allowing in my life or what are the things that I have allowed in my life that dishonor God, that 
push me away from God, right? Because those are the things for which we end up having to repent for. So when we talk about repentance, uh, the word literally means to turn and go the other way. But what you're really thinking about is what are the things um, that dishonor my relationship with God? What are the things um, that that bar me or keep me from being connected to God? And so this is a season where you can begin to just sit and just think about, you know, what are some of the things that I need to let go of so I can get back in God's presence? What are the, some of the things that I need to repent of so that I can get back into the presence of God, right? Because again, when we talk about prayer, it is a prayer of repentance, right? It is a prayer of repentance. It is us humbling ourselves, meaning we take off all that excess stuff and say, God, we come to you as we are. And if we will humble ourselves, that we will repent, you know, if we, if we will begin to do the discovery around some of the things that we're doing that bar us from God's presence or that dishonor the presence of God, um, then we will see that there's areas that we can begin to move on. And so I just, I, I give that to you as a pre-Bible study layup uh, as we go into the Word, as a pre-Bible study layup. But tonight, tonight, okay, I see Dr. Fry, Amber, Linda, Darling Fry, uh, 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 oh, um, uh, I see y'all, I see y'all, glad y'all here, glad y'all online. So tonight, tonight, we are going to be looking again. Tonight, we're going to be looking again at the armor of God. And so we began um, two weeks ago this new series in Bible study looking at the armor of God. And so we started the first night, the first night looking specifically at what was the purpose of the armor, right? And so if you go back to Ephesians 6 uh, and you begin to read that language that Paul writes, and remember now, Paul has been in prison. Paul is, you know, he's just beginning ministry. It's his first real time in prison. He's trying to write to the church at Ephesus. He doesn't know if he's ever going to get back. And so as he is in prison, as he is writing to his people, he's looking out and he's seeing the guards and he's using what he sees to help facilitate what he's writing, right? And so he begins to write about this armor of God, but he begins by saying that, that we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against spiritual wickedness, and, and, and against, you know, those in high places. And so he talks about the kind of warfare that we are fighting against. It's not your brother. It's not your sister. It's not your mother. It's not your cousin. It's not your boss. It is a principality. It is a spirit. It is wickedness in high places. As we think about viruses, right, wickedness in high places, right? That's what we're fighting against, right? And so Paul gives us in the beginning of Ephesians 6 um, the, the, the territory. Here's where you got to fight. Here's the things for which you are fighting against. And then what Paul gives us uh, is, is why we are fighting. What he says is that put on the full armor of God so that we would be able to stand. This is a critical a critical distinction. Paul does not say to us in Ephesians 6, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to grab your sword and run out there and do battle against the enemy. He does not say put on the full armor of God so you can practice your taekwondo and your karate and your kung fu. He doesn't say put on the full armor of God so you can pull out the nunchucks and all that kind of stuff. Paul doesn't say any of that. Instead, what Paul says is, put on the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, put on the full armor of God so that on the day you will be able to stand. The purpose of the armor of God is so that we can stand. Right. In fact, if you were to look uh, critically at all of the weaponry in the armor of God, all of the weaponry in the armor of God is defensive weaponry. Think about it. There's the belt of truth. 
There's the breastplate of righteousness. There's the feet shod with peace. There's the, 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 the shield of faith. There's the helmet of salvation. The, the only offensive weaponry in the armor of God is the sword of the spirit, which we're told immediately is the word of God. And so again, God is giving us defensive weaponry so that we are able to stand. And I believe if you were to look around right now at your situation, if you were to look around at the world, we see the enemy on the attack. And what the body of Christ needs, needs to do in this moment, in this time, is simply stand. That's, that's what we are called to do. We are called to stand. Your only offensive weaponry in this season is the word of God. That's it. Worry is not going to kill it. Anxiety is not going to kill it. Uh, watching 20 hours of CNN and MSNBC and Fox News is not going to do it for you. Your only offensive weaponry in this moment is the word of God. And if you would just simply fight with the word of God, if you will stand still knowing that God is God and fight with the word of God, then we will see victory in this season. But you running out trying to buy two, two boxes of toilet paper, <laughs> you try you running out trying to get trying to get two crates of, of, of water, that ain't gonna work. What works in this season is is the offensive weaponry, which is the word of God. And so Paul is giving us this in Ephesians 6. Paul is giving us this in Ephesians 6. Stand firm that we may know that God is God, right? Right. This is this is this is what this season is all about. Anissa said, said, I need some. He's some toilet paper. <laughs> this is what this season is all about. That we may stand. And again, our offensive weaponry in this season. Your offensive weaponry in this season. That's right, Robin. Be still and know that God is God. Your offensive weaponry in this season is the word of God. That's it. That's it. Your, your scholarly mind, your ability to have the best combat, all that other stuff is not going to cut it. Your offensive weaponry in this season is the word of God. So we began our Bible study two weeks ago looking at the totality of the reasoning uh, for the weaponry and for the armor of God beginning there in Ephesians 6. That was two weeks ago. Last week, after we looked at um, why we have the weaponry, last week we looked at the first uh, piece of weaponry that's mentioned. Um, it's interesting in Ephesians six, at the first piece of weaponry that's interest that, that, that that's mentioned is the belt of truth. I mean, if you were going to put on uh, your weapons, you, you probably wouldn't put on your belt first. That's weird. You put on your belt. Uh, uh, probably last after you have on everything else. But the piece of weaponry that's mentioned first in Ephesians 6 is the belt of truth. And the reason why the belt of truth is mentioned first is because in ancient Rome, when they would fight, they would have full length tunics, right? And so when they would go into war, they would gird up their tunics and wrap them into their belts so, so that the, the legs had room so that they could begin to fight. And so if you did not tuck your tunic into your belt, you stood the chance of tripping on your own tunic. If, if, if it was not tucked into your belt, you stood the chance of falling on your own sword. You stood the chance of messing up the line as they were going forward into battle. And so the first thing you had to do in weaponry, the first thing you had to do in battle was make sure your belt was tight. And make sure you had truth tucked in. Make sure it was tucked in. Make sure it was true, right? And so that's why Paul mentions this first, because everything needs to be tucked into a truth. And so the question we have to be asking ourselves at all times is what is true, right? When we're fighting, the question we have to be asking ourselves, when we're fighting the enemy, the question we have to be asking ourselves is what is true? What is the thing for which I know God said? Who did God say that I am? What did God say that I am, right? We have to tuck that truth into our belt so that we might be able to fight. 
If we are unable to tuck that truth into our belt, then we wind up tripping on our own stuff, right? Now we're tripping on doubt and we're tripping on worry and we're tripping on anxiety and we're tripping on, on scarcity. We're tripping on poverty. We're tripping on uncertainty, all because we would not tuck into our belt of truth what God has said about us. I'm telling you, the enemy, the enemy loves when we don't know the word of God. The enemy, the enemy gets excited when we don't know who we are. He's quick to jump in and try to tell us who we are or try to divide us away from the will and purpose of God. And so we've got to make sure at all times that our belt of truth is tight, that we are wearing our belt of truth. The, 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 does, does that resonate with anybody who's listening online? Go ahead and tell me if that resonates. If so, say yes. Um, uh, give me a heart or something. Let me know that you're still here. Uh, 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 does that resonate with you that you must at all times wear your belt of truth? That you must tuck into your belt what God says about you, or else you end up tripping over your own doubts and your own worries. Okay, I see Irene, Chaplain Irene. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Does that resonate with you? Does it resonate with you? And we'll take just a second. Okay, I see one more yes. Okay, okay, okay. Trina says yes. Okay. Okay, okay, here we go. Declare in the creed what God says. You better go ahead, Ebony. You better go ahead. So so tonight, tonight what I want to do. Oh, good. Carissa says yes. Carissa, okay, okay, okay. Okay, Nina says yes, yes, yes. So so what I want to do tonight is I want to talk about the helmet of salvation. Okay, Linda says yes. I want to talk about, Teresa says yes. Okay, I see y'all. I see y'all. I want to talk about the helmet, the helmet of of salvation. Now, I'm skipping ahead, but I'm doing so for a specific purpose. And again, you, you want to invite your friends and invite your family into this particular Bible study. Come on, Russell, I hear you. You want to invite your friends into this into this Bible study. Uh, tonight, I want to talk specifically about the, 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 the helmet of salvation. And I want to do it by looking um, at two separate things. And so if you will allow me, I want to build a case um, as we go to the helmet of salvation. But the first thing I want to look at in order to go there is the glory of God. So I want to talk first about the glory of God, and then we'll go from the glory of God to the helmet of salvation. Okay? Y'all good? Everybody here? Everybody here? Okay. 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 So... Here is the first question. I'm going to be asking questions, um, so please answer uh, as quickly as you can, and we'll move. Here's the first question. What is, what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? That's the first question I'm asking. What is the glory? When you think about, when, when you hear that term, what does it mean to you, the glory of God? What is the glory of God? Now, this is an interactive study. I'm going to be asking more questions, so you might as well go ahead and get ready to answer now. What is the glory of God? Okay, Ebony says the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. That's good. That's good. Let me get two more answers, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. What is the glory of God? Okay, Robin says his blessing. That's really good. Okay, Carissa says his grace. That's good. Okay, Trina says trust. That's really good. Interesting. God's approval. Really good. Really good. Really good. What is the glory of God? One of the scriptures I want you to look at comes out of love in his, in his covering. Very good. Very good. One of the scriptures I want you to look at comes out of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 12th verse. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 12th verse. His love, very good. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, grace and mercy, very good. Question again is, what is the glory of God? Recognizing the gifts he gives us. Very interesting. I, I, I want you to look at Isaiah 40 and 12, and it reads like this. He who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, God 
who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. Think about that. How big do you have to be in order to measure all the waters in the hollow of your hand? You got to be, be, be pretty massive, right? Right? Isaiah 40 gives all these different languages around how great and how amazing and how big and how uh, uh, magnificent and wonderful God is, right? That is the glory of God. The glory of God is the splendor of God. It is the it is the the ultimate grace of God, the 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 the, the beauty of God, right? Right? You think about when, when God goes before Moses, right, and it says that his train fills the temple. Think about a bride who is getting married, and, and when the bride comes down the aisle, think about her train that comes off the back of her dress, right, and how beautiful her train is, right? It talks to, it's, the, her train speaks to her beauty. Her train speaks to the glory of the moment, speaks to the majesty of the moment, right? Right? So the glory of God is a recognition. It is his splendor. It is his majesty. It is the greatness of who God is. That is God's glory, right? Right? God is so awesome. You know, you, you, you get to look every day and see the sunshine come up and see, you know, the, 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 the sunrise, right? The, 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 the earth speaks to the glory of God, right? His creation speaks to the glory of God. What other God could create the mountains and, 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 and the trees and all that we see in front of us, right? His beauty, that's right. That speaks to the glory of God. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the glory of God means. Y'all y'all, 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 y'all get that? That is the glory of God. Now, now, now his brilliant light, yes, that is the glory of God. The sun, the moon, the setting of the stars, all of it speaks to the glory of God. All of nature, all of heaven, each of us, all our formation, just the very way in which we are created speaks to God's glory. It points to God's glory. His grandeur, his, his splendor, his beauty, his majesty. That's right. It's beautiful. That is the glory of God, right? So now his character, you better come on here, Dr. Ebony. His character speaks to the glory of God. Now, now that we have an understanding, a critical understanding, a didactical understanding of the glory of God, here is my next question. What is the glory of man? First question was, what is the glory of God? The second question is, what is the glory of man? And again, I'll take, I'll take three answers, and then we'll, 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 we'll push. What is the glory of man? We, we've covered what is the glory of God. My second question is, what is the glory of man? Diversity in the world, interesting, very interesting. Diversity in the world, very interesting. What is the glory of man? He created us in his glory. Yes, ma'am, you jumping. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Very good. Somebody else, what is the glory of man? We have covered what the glory of God is. What is the glory of man? Being caring to others. Yes, ma'am. Obedience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is the glory of man? of man. We, and by man, I mean humanity. What is the glory of humanity? Staying faithful. Very good. Very good. We've dealt with what the glory of God is. What is the glory of humanity? What is the glory of man? Let me get one more and, and, and then we'll jump. What is the glory of humanity? What is the glory of man? Being Christ-like, reflecting God's glory. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Very, very good. Hear these words, hear these words, res- respective to God's promise. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hear these words from Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first through the third verse. Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first through the third verse. And it reads like this. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord 
has risen upon the earth. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. That's Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first through the third verse. For the, the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. The glory of man is a reflection of the glory of God. It should work like this. Our glory should be a reflection of God's glory in all that we do. We should reflect God's glory. We should reflect God's splendor, God's greatness, God's majesty. We should be a reflection of the goodness of God. Our glory only comes about because we are, ref, re, re, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use this word, re, re, refracting. I, I messed it up. We are refracting or reflecting God's glory. Does that make sense? Our glory is, is a response to God's glory. Without God's glory, we have no glory, right? Right? The Lord will arise and shine upon us. Our glory comes from God. So here are three quick questions and then, and then we'll jump. But, but, but so, so how do we reflect God's glory? How do we reflect God's glory? Number one, in order to reflect God's glory, we have to be pointed towards God. If, if I had a mirror and I'm trying to reflect uh, the, the, the light, it's not going to work if I don't point the mirror towards the light. Does that, does that make sense? So in order to reflect God's glory, I've got to keep myself focused on God. If I am not focused on God, I cannot reflect God's glory. If I'm focused on CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, if I'm focused on anxiety and worry and doubt, if I'm focused on my own will and my own desires, then I am not focused on God and I am unable, unable to reflect God's glory, right? And so in order to reflect God's glory, number one, I've got to be focused. I've got to be pointing towards God. That is the only way to reflect God's glory. That's number one. That's number one. We must be pointed. We must be focused on God if we're going to reflect God's glory. If I'm focused on anything else, I'm simply reflecting that, right? You, 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 you end up watching TV for 20 or so hours or watching the same news cycle over and over again. You start sounding like them. You sit around the same friends and have the same conversations over and over again. You start sounding like them, right? But what happens if instead I'm studying God's word or I'm, I'm meditating or I'm focused on, on worship and praise and prayer, I begin to reflect that. So whatever you point towards, you reflect. Whatever you are focused on, you will reflect. And so in order to reflect God's glory, I got to be focused on God. That's number one. That's number one. That's number one. So not only do we have to be focused on God in order to be adequate um, uh, 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 reflectors of his glory, but, but then number two, watch this. This is really important. This is really important, right? In order to reflect God's glory, not only do I have to be focused, but then watch this number two. Number two, my surface has to be clear. <laughs> I can't have no smudges. I can't have no dirt. I can't have no filter. If I'm going to reflect God's glory, I got to make sure my surface is clear, right? What happens if I take a mirror and try to reflect the sun, but instead I've got a tint over the mirror, right? It's not going to reflect to the degree that it could because the surface isn't clear, right? And so in order to be adequate reflectors of God's glory, we got to clean some stuff off. I can't be reflecting God's glory if I'm carrying anger towards somebody else. 
I can't be reflecting God's glory if I'm walking around with judgment for somebody else. I can't be reflecting God's glory if I've got envy and pervasion and wrestling and, and moving all around. I can't be reflecting God's glory if I'm walking around with sin and all kinds of stuff caked up all over me, right? I got to repent and get that stuff off so that I can be a clear surface to reflect God's glory. I got to shake it off. Yes, ma'am. I got to pull out the Windex. Yes, ma'am. Some spiritual Windex. I got to get it off so that I can reflect God's glory. If we are carrying junk all over us and attempting to reflect God's glory, what will happen is we will end up fragmenting and messing up what's coming back. Does that make sense? And so we've got to make sure that as we are focused on God, that we are that we get the junk off so that we can clearly reflect God's glory. So the question becomes, what are you carrying? What's, what's getting in the way of the full reflection of God's glory in your life? What are the things that you got to get off so that you can adequately and accurately uh, uh, convey and, and, and reflect God's glory? Because all of us, now listen now, all of us are carrying something. Staying and focused on God's glory leads, leads to peace, 100%, 100%. All of us are carrying something. And so if we do not get off that stuff, if we do not get off that stuff, huh? if we don't get off that stuff, then we will, we, we, we will not be good reflectors of God's glory. So again, number one. In order to be an accurate reflector of God's glory, I've got to be focused on God. I can't be focused on worry. I can't be focused on the news channel. I can't be focused on humanity or man or what anybody else says. I've got to be focused on God because I'm trying to reflect God, right? That's number one. Number two, in order to be an accurate reflector of God's glory, I've got to get some stuff off the mirror, right? I got to wipe it down. Get some holy Windex, right, 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 so that I'm able to accurately reflect God's glory. That's number two. That's number two. Number three, number three, number three, not only do I have to do that, but then number three, in order to accurately reflect God's glory, and this is this is a big one. This is a big one. Uh, 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 we struggle with this one all the time. In order to accurately reflect God's glory, I have to, I have to, number three, I think I erased my notes. Okay, that's all right. I have to, I have to, number three, I have to be still. What I mean by that is I cannot reflect the fullness of God's glory if I'm twisting in the wind. I can't reflect the fullness of, God, of, of, of God's glory if, I, if I'm twisting around and around and around and around. In order for the light or the, or the mirror to reflect the light, it's got to be positioned and it's got to be still. If you are not still, Martha LaFleur is watching. Yes, man. David Webb, good to see you, sir. If you are not still, if you are not still in God's presence, then you do not, you cannot accurately reflect God's glory. So again, number one, we've got to be focused on God. If we are focused on God, we can reflect God's glory. Number two, we have got to get the junk off the mirror so that we can accurately reflect God's glory. And then number three, we have to be still. You can't be moving all around. You can't be reflecting one second and back to worry the next second. You can't even be reflecting one minute and back to anxiety the next minute. Let us be accurate reflectors of the glory of God. And the only way to do that is to be still. The only way to do that is to be still. So we have talked about the glory of God. And I want, I, I want to use that as a layup uh, uh, to get into a quick discussion, because we're already behind time, a quick, a quick discussion on the helmet of salvation. And you say, you say well, 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 Ron, why would you start with the glory of God to go into the helmet of salvation? Well, here's the reason why. Because when we don't reflect God's glory, we are still reflecting something. Do y'all hear me? When, when we do not reflect God's glory, 
we are still at all times reflecting something. And so the question becomes, if you're not reflecting God, what are you reflecting? Whose glory are you reflecting? If, if, if what's coming out ain't God, then, 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 then who do you look like? If you don't look like your daddy, who do you look like? Because you, 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 you look like somebody. So if it's not God, who is it, right? And so here becomes, here becomes the answer. When we do not reflect God, when we do not reflect the glory of God, what we are saying essentially is that we is that we reflect the, the man himself, humanity himself. We watch this, watch this. We attempt to put on our own crowns and and right, right, right. We attempt to put on our own crowns and to define ourselves as glorious, right? We try to take God's glory and own it for ourselves. When we do not reflect God's glory, it is our attempt to take the glory of God and carry it as our crowns. Here becomes the problem with that kind of thinking. Here becomes the problem with that reality. And I want you to hear me very, very clearly, very, very clearly, because this is the season I think we are in right now. This is the season that I hear God saying we are in right now. Do you know what the Latin word for owner of the crown, owner uh, 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 he who he or she who wears the crown? Do you know what the Latin word is for that? The Latin word, the Latin word for owner of the crown or one who has the crown, one who wears the crown. The Latin word, watch this, watch this, is, is, is Corona. The Latin word for owner of the crown, the one who wears the crown, is corona. Isn't it interesting that right now we have a coronavirus problem? Isn't it interesting that right now globally there is a coronavirus problem? Could it be? an indication from the spirit realm that we have been trying to take God's glory. We have been trying to take God's crown. We have been trying to not, to, we have been no longer reflecting the glory of God. And now we are reflecting ourselves. And here we go with this coronavirus because we want to wear the crown. We want to be the ones that hold all the glory instead of reflecting God's glory. Isn't that interesting that the name of the virus would be the one who wears the crown? And here we are having turned our backs on God and tried to do this thing all by ourselves. And God says, okay, you want the glory? You want the crown? I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> you go and you get coronavirus, right? <laughs> right, right? We have to, we have to give God back his glory. We have to stop trying to take the glory of God for ourselves. We got to let God be God and we have to reflect God and not ourselves. When we when we try to reflect ourselves and not God, we end up right where we're at right now. Give God back his crown. Let God wear the crown. Reflect God's glory. Get the mess off of you so that you can focus on God. Stop moving. Just be still so, so God can be God. Listen, we have to let the crown go back to God. Stop wearing God's crown. That's what creates a virus, right? right? God gets all the glory. And watch this. God will not share his glory. It is impossible. It, 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 God does not share God's glory, but God will allow us to reflect his glory in the earth if we are positioned, if we are focused, and if we are clear. And so that, that becomes the role that we have to do. That, 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 that becomes the role that we have to maneuver if we're going to begin to see uh, a real healing and wholeness happen in the earth. Does, does, does any of this make sense um, to those who are watching? Let me hear some feedback. Let me get some feedback, and then we'll jump and close out. Let me hear some feedback. Chapman Irene says, give, give God back his glory. Yes, man. Give God back his glory. Yes, man. Yes, man. Okay, Harold Golden is watching. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This, this is the word of God. We have attempted to take God's glory. We have in so many places turned our back on God. 
And so what God is saying is if you want to wear my crown, you go ahead. But when, but when we try to wear God's crown, it becomes Corona. And now we're wrestling with a virus simply because we will not turn ourselves to God. It's time for the church to give God back his glory. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about the church. It's time for us to give God back his glory, right? Right? It's time for the cross to be centered. It's time for Christ to be centered. It's time for that to be the reason why people gather, not because of our good singing, our good preaching, but because this is the place in which we encounter the glory of God. Right. That's the that's the that is the focus of our ministry, the focus of what we do. It shouldn't be about uh, who's going to read this or who's going to put on this robe or this thing or that. It should be where do I go to encounter the glory of God when we give God back his crown, when we stop trying to own the crown for ourselves, we begin to see God move like never before. I believe that Second Chronicles seven and fourteen is right. I believe I believe that God was right to tell to tell uh, 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 Solomon this is how it's got to be done. That if my people, not some random strangers, but if my people would humble themselves and pray will repent of their wicked ways, will seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, then I will heal the land. God said his people, us, if we would stop trying to wear his crown, how if we would turn and be focused and reflect him, if we would wipe off all the wicked ways that are keeping us from being good reflections, if we would stand still and let God be God, then God would heal the land. But as long as we're trying to wear God's crown, we're going to be walking around with Corona. That's, that's, that is completely the word of God. We've got to give God back his crown. Linda says, oh yes, man is pulling away from God because they believe in themselves instead of him. Absolutely. It's time for the body of Christ to turn back to God as the focus of what we do. It's time for us to get small so God can be big. It's time for us to lessen so that God can increase. It's time for us to be focused on the will, the power, the presence of Jesus Christ. And if we will do that, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If we will simply do those pieces, we will begin to see God move like God has never moved before. Amen. Trust God and demonstrate our trust in him 100%. 100%. And, 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 and that is as easy as us standing still and staying focused on God. That's it. Listen, listen, this is not a hard word. This is, this is not difficult for us to do. All we have to do is stand still, focus on God, and keep ourselves clean. <laughs> That's it. That's it. If you will do just those three pieces, if you will focus on God, if you will keep yourself clean, you don't have to worry about your brother or your sister. If you will keep yourself clear, if you will keep yourself clean and be focused and stand still, then the glory of God will reflect on you. And here is the beauty of the glory of God, that when the glory of God reflects on you, it reflects and refracts into the world right? It refracts into the world. And so you simply being focused, you simply keeping yourself clean, you simply standing still and trusting God begins to now affect everybody else around you. Because now when they come into your presence, they're going, something is different here. Something has changed here. Something has altered here because you are reflecting the glory of God. Here's a question uh, I was asking God about the virus and how we should act like a mother, like a person in the world. I, I can't read the rest of it. I can't see it. But certainly... So she has the answer now. Oh, she has the answer now. Okay, good. So yeah, certainly. This is about us turning back to God. This is about us focusing on God. If we will focus on God, if we will keep ourselves clean, and if we will stay fully planted in the power and the presence and trust of God, we will reflect truly God's glory in the earth. Church, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. 
as always. I have to admit, it is challenging when you're under attack, but I'm doing better. God bless you. It is challenging. It is challenging. We have to remind ourselves that victory only comes from following the instructions of God. That victory only comes from following the instructions and will of God. All the weaponry he gave us in Ephesians 6 is defensive with the only offensive weaponry being the word of God. If we will speak the word of God and stand still, we will see the victory of God every single time. I, I trust all, I trust all my life in Christ and God. Yes, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. All of it is in Christ Jesus. All of it is in God. But again, we are called in this season to focus, to clean up, and to stand still. If you will do that, we will not only see the glory of God, we will reflect the glory of God. Listen, beloved, I thank God for you. I'm going to be on for a while. I know I said I'd get to uh, the helmet of salvation, but I but I feel like I feel like this is a good place right here, a good place right here to pause, that God is moving right here. So we will pick this part up. I, I promise, I promise next, next Thursday, 6.30 p.m., we will get to the helmet of salvation. But I feel the presence of God uh, right now, right here. Would you allow me just for a minute, just for a minute to pray for you, to pray that God's glory be upon you. Here is the prayer. Here is the prayer. Oh God, right now, right here. God, right now, right here. I pray, Lord, that you would touch everyone who is listening now and those who will listen later. I pray, God, that we be accurate reflections of your glory. I pray, God, that you will begin to move in our lives in such a way, Lord, that our appetites would change, God, that our hunger would change, God, that we would run to get off everything, Lord, that offends you, God. We would run, Lord, to get off everything that, that, that gets us out of your presence, God. We would run, Lord, to take off all those things, God, that keep us from being accurate reflectors of your light and your glory and your will. I pray, God, that you would touch each of us, God, those who are called by your name, Lord, that we, Lord, would begin to repent in this season, that we, God, would begin to turn our face back to you, that we, Lord, in this season, and would call upon you and hear your voice, God. Oh, God, shake us like you have never shaken us before, God. Shake us, God, like you have never shaken us before, God. Everything that is unlike you, Lord, let it come off, God. Every chaff, God, let it come off, God. Let the wheat remain, God. Everything that is unlike you, oh, Lord, take it off, God, that we might know you fuller. Let this be a season of introspection. Let this be a season season, God, of, of, of beginning to see you in new ways and beginning to worship you in new ways. Let this be a season, God, of transformation, God, that as we sit in these cocoons that we have been placed in by the government and the virus, God, let us come out on the other side, new creatures, God, new creatures in you, God, new people hungry for you, seeking after you, God, searching after you, God. Let us come out as new creatures, Lord, on the other side. And God, we covenant, Lord, to give you all the honor, God. We covenant, God, to give you and you alone all the glory. That, God, you would wear the crown and not us. We covenant, God, to bless your holy name. This we pray now in Jesus' precious, mighty, holy, and matchless name. And the internet people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Listen, God bless you. We will see you Sunday. Uh, at 10 o'clock, right back here on Facebook Live for, for church, um, and, then at, and then at 11.30 on YouTube for church. And then on Monday morning, we will have a prayer call, and you've been given the prayer number. I shouldn't have said that because then I, 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 I will find it. But you have been given the prayer number, but you can call in on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time and pray with us, and we'll see you right back here next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., online. Listen, I love y'all. God bless you. Stay inside, stay focused, keep yourself clean, uh, and, and stay firmly planted in the word of will and will of God, and you will see the glory of God. Amen. All right. God bless you.